Hello everybody, I'm here today to talk to you about mid-side processing, uh, specifically in LMS, but um, the principles here apply probably to most software worth anybody's time. Uh, first, what's mid-sides? Um, well, intuitively, mid is the content at the center of the audio signal, and side is the content to the side to the audio signal. Now, obviously we can't extract this perfectly because uh, we only have a left and right signal um, and also because it's not really well defined um, when you mix it down to two channels like that uh, what what goes in the center what goes just in the left and what goes just in the right um, and mid and side is just a way to kind of approximate these ideas mathematically um, mid is the average of the left and right signals and side is the difference divided by two and that's just to match the amplitude of the mid. So the idea behind MS processing, re real quick before we continue, um, you'll notice these are linear combinations of left and right. Uh, so we can represent this operation as a matrix which will be important later. So the idea is you have a left-right signal, you decompose it into mid sides and then you alter mid and side individually and then you bake it back down into a left and right signal again, just doing the inverse of these operations, right? So that would be to get side or to get left, you add mid and side, and to get right, you subtract mid and side. So an L L LMS, um, so this is what it looks like when you do an LMS. You have an incoming left and right signal, and you have this matrix operation, um, which we can do an LMS with the stereophonic matrix effect. Um, and that breaks it down. Now the left channel is carrying mid data and the right channel is carrying side data. Then we can process each channel individually. LMS gives us that capability. And then we combine it back into left and right signals using another matrix. Uh, very straightforward. And I'll, I'll do it, I'll do this with the matrix effects and with some effects that I made myself. Um, so, the first, so I have here a project that I've been working on. Um, well, I ha I've had it sitting around for a long time. I also have here in my master channel, I have two stereophonic matrix matrices already. Uh, what these do, and these are just sort of, um, these isolate the mid and the side data to, to make it easier to hear what you're doing. Um, so you can see here we've got, so this first one, if you look at the parameters, these are all set to the same, so basically it's just doing it's just doing a mono mix down basically, uh, which is what mid is. So it helps us hear what mono is, and this helps us hear what uh, what's in the side. So you can see it does the same thing. It does the same thing as the first one, but instead of adding the right data, it subtracts it. So you can hear what's different between the two signals, right? So here's a song, and I'll start it off here. This is just a crap little song that I was working on. So, you can hear there's definitely a lot of stereo content, that's for sure. Um, so let's listen to what the mono sounds like. Mono sounds like... And, uh, this was in the sides. Now the first thing you'll notice if you have any experience with mid-side information is um, if you listen back to the... To the side. Okay. There's a lot of bass content there. If we do a, a low pass filter at 200. Right. There's a lot there. This should be pretty much silent um, in the sides. So we want we want to be able to take that um, that data out of we want to be able to take that low frequency information out of the sides and that's important because in the old days if you had too much bass too many bass frequencies in the sides um, it, and the needle instead of going up and down would go side to side and could jump out of the groove and go to another part of the record um, so that was obviously a big problem so it's a it's a technical reason why you don't want that but it's also it's also an aesthetic reason because if you have too many bass frequencies in the side um, not only is it just 
is distracting, but it uh, you know it creates problems in the way that the base frequencies are perceived and that sort of thing. So um, if we go back and we listen to just the sides, right? So our base that we got going here is a major culprit. So uh, I'm just going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually create a effects channel just for this guy. Let's do 17. So 17. All right, so 17. So uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to encode. We want to encode this matrix right here. All right, so we're doing this step here. We want to encode this matrix. into our processing signal. Right, there we go. So I got 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then right to right is negative 0.5. So just right now, just hear what that sounds like. It doesn't sound interesting, but, oops. Right. So now our, now our left channel is, um, now our left channel is carrying mid data and the right channel is carrying side. One. Right, then we're gonna do then we're gonna do the inverse. Um, so we're basically doing this matrix and then this one right over here to go back to left and right. So that's one, 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 negative one. So you can see here's the one that goes to mid sides. Here's the one that goes from mid sides. You'll notice these are the same matrix except the op, the reverse is twice, is double. Um, I guess it makes it easier to remember. So this should, these should be, these are opposites of each other, so it should have no effect. So let's listen. There's no, there's no, um, the effects by themselves don't actually change the signal. So that's very important. But we now, in between, in between the two matrices, um, from this matrix to this matrix, the left channel now is carrying mid data and the right channel is carrying side data so we can process them individually. So the problem we're having, and I'm just going to isolate the mid, the side so we can hear. The problem we're here, having is there's too much bass there. So I'm just going to throw a quick high pass filter. Uh, I'm going to unlink the channel. So now channel one is mid. So, right? so if we change mid, we won't hear anything because we're only listening to side right now. But I'm going to set it down to zero just so we don't you know, change anything. And this guy, I'm going to bump him up like that. And there you go. We just took, we just took out all the um, side information about or all the base frequencies out of the side. Easy as that. Um, so how does this sound all together? Before after. And now it's a little bit of a problem because now we've just um, we just hurt our actually I'll use EQ as well. We just hurt the base frequencies in total. We just took a bunch out so We'll add a few more to the mid. All right, very subtle. Before, after. All right. All we did was we moved the bass frequencies to the mid, so we can we can listen. That's just sides. Mid. And we can do other neat stuff like we can do, um, oh, oh, before we continue, let's go back and listen and make sure that our mix sounds good. Alright, well, let's listen to the, uh, alright, nice, mid sound, or sides sound good. My problem is one more problem we're having. Um, where are they? Where are they at? Uh, fix there. Okay. There we go. 
this loop is very basic. Uh, Alright, so it seems like this guy's the culprit. So I'm just going to toss him in 17 as well. Very, very subtle, um, but surprisingly important. Uh, let's let's show how it can be applied in the opposite direction. So we have here this pad. So it's mid. That side. So let's throw this guy out into eighteen. Now instead of using the matrices, I, I wrote these. Um, the split and join plugins. So let's do split and then join. And these do just the exact same thing. This is these just basically do this matrix and this matrix split and join. So um, let's experiment a little bit with what we can do. So let's dart EQ. Oh, another place mid -pro side processing is useful is in reverb. So Let's let's put some reverb before the mid sides. So All right. EQ on. Unlink the channels. The sides carry all our high frequency information. The mid carries all our mid frequency information. Put a little in there. Oh, I don't have any EQ on that, looks like. Just fix up this chorus real quick. A little loud, a little on the loud side. It's not an amplifier. Very, very subtle. So a little lead here, so you can see. Now, the important thing about keeping inside one of the one of the advantages that mid sides gives us is the ability to um, uh, to really have control over our, our mix. 
Um, it's really a, a very fundamental way of looking at how everything is put together. Writing a lead. Oh, I'm live. Live YouTube broadcaster. Semi live. I do these videos all in one take, so give me a break. That sounds awful. Not even just like a sound, like musically, it's terrible, it doesn't fit at all, but let's... Now, I'll, or Caps, or I think it's Caps, right? Cap. Cap has this really nice stereo tools plugin. So we listen to, let's see, I say this guy. So we can just twist of it now. We can we can reduce the we can reduce the sides level. Very very helpful. I'm also going to split join. All right, we can already hear. We can already hear there's like no sides information. Brighten this up a little bit. That's the wrong one. Sides, mid. So mid is what you'd hear. That's what you would hear if you were listening to it in, you know, iPod mono setting or whatever, or like you know, a live performance. You'll hear a lot of the mid. Side is that's all that stereo width, right? Now this is important because if we listen to the whole thing, if we listen to the mix in just the mid, you'll notice. It really stands out. Almost, kind of. And all, all our pads and stuff are now in the bass. Right?
And that is the gist of that. Thank you for watching.